Tonight, NBC News is reporting there is evidence that suggests America's fighting men and women in the war in Iraq are on the job, in some cases under fire, without what some consider to be the very best equipment to protect them. Tonight, we're airing the result of months of investigation into the following question. Is the body armor issued to every soldier in the U.S. Army really the best available for the job, or is there something better, something safer? At the heart of this question is another product that some contend does a better job at stopping bullets and ultimately saving lives. Our exclusive investigation tonight from NBC News senior investigative correspondent Lisa Myers. For troops in the line of fire, body armor can mean the difference between death and life. The U.S. Army insists our troops have the very best, and without question, that armor has saved lives in Iraq and Afghanistan. The body armor we issue to our soldiers today is the best in the world, bar none. But is it really the best? An NBC News investigation, including independent ballistics tests, suggests there may be something better, called dragon skin. Some soldiers and their families have tried to buy dragon skin, believing it offers better protection. But the U.S. Army banned dragon skin last year, even before formally testing it. So we went to the factory where dragon skin is made. So this is dragon skin. That's it. It's a, it's a unique system comprised of individual scales, if you will. As you can see, it's flexible, it's pliable. The Army's current body armor is called Interceptor. We found the man who designed that body armor a decade ago, Jim McGee, a retired Marine colonel. What is the best body armor available today, in your view? Dragon skin is the best out there, hands down. It's better than the Interceptor. It is state-of-the-art. In some cases, it's two steps ahead of anything that I've ever seen. Why? He says more stopping power and more coverage. McGee says the Army's Interceptor uses four plates to stop the most lethal bullets leaving some vital organs unprotected. But McGee says dragon skin, with discs that interconnect like medieval chain mail, can wrap most of a soldier's torso, providing a greater area of maximum protection. McGee has no financial stake in dragon skin. If you would ask me today, uh, Jim, we're sending you to Iraq tomorrow, what would you wear? I would buy dragon skin and I would wear it. He's not alone. The CIA bought dragon skin for these elite operatives in Iraq, they say after it passed CIA testing. But Brigadier General Mark Brown, in charge of body armor for the Army, says the Army conducted its own tests of dragon skin last year. 13 of 48 shots that were taken at dragon, dragon skin were penetrating, full penetrating shots. So dragon skin failed? Dragon skin failed miserably. Brown says those tests led the Army to ban dragon skin with this safety of use message warning soldiers of death or serious injury. There's just one problem. The Army banned dragon skin in March, almost two months before that testing began, in May. But General, the Army banned dragon skin before the Army even tested it. Lisa, I'm, I'm not aware of that. I don't know that it had not been tested at that time. I, I wasn't here. NBC News has learned that well after the Army ban, select soldiers assigned to protect generals and VIPs in Iraq and Afghanistan wore dragon skin. This soldier, who asked us to conceal his identity and voice, says he wore dragon skin on certain missions with the full knowledge of his commanders. I wore it and I saw other people wearing it. It conforms to your body. It gives you more mobility. Does the ban on dragon skin apply equally to everyone in the Army? Lisa, yes, it does. However, sources in these documents reveal that the security detail for a top general in Iraq bought and wore dragon skin. If dragon skin is good enough for a three-star general, shouldn't it be good enough for other soldiers? Lisa, even three-star generals make mistakes. A Pentagon spokesman says that general, Peter Corelli, had no knowledge that dragon skin was prohibited, and he never wore dragon skin though it's possible his staff ordered it for him. The Pentagon says Corelli acknowledges his bodyguards ordered and received concealed body armor, but he didn't know the armor was dragon skin. 
given the controversy over body armor, NBC News commissioned an independent side-by-side -side test of dragon skin and the Army's interceptor vest. In that testing, dragon skin outperformed the Army's body armor in stopping the most lethal threats. Retired four-star Army General Wayne Downing, now an NBC News analyst, observed the tests. Well, what we saw today, Lisa, and again, it's a limited number sure. of, of, of trials, dragon skin was significantly better. These independent limited tests raise serious questions about the Army's claim that dragon skin doesn't work and suggest more testing is needed. NBC News will report on the specific results of the independent tests on Dateline NBC Sunday, Brian. All right, our exclusive investigation, thanks to Lisa Myers tonight out of Washington. Welcome back, Bud Light Port Paradise. Here we go. Bud Light Port Paradise, with two cruise ships, 4,000 shipments, and one private island concert.